Oh, hi. You're a little early. I'm just finishing painting up this badge here, but I'll be back in two shakes and we'll get this episode started. So you might be asking yourself, Jeff, what were you painting a badge for? Well, this might give you a hint. This badge is for this box that I 3D printed. And inside that box goes this, a Zoom floppy board. Get out of the package here and have a look. These are produced by go for retro I'll put a link in below. And it allows you to hook a Commodore uh, IEC or IEEE 488 disk drive or other devices up to your PC. Why would you want to do that? Well that way you've got a backup copy of all your old floppies so you still have the data when they turn to magnetic dust. The first thing we'll do is get our Zoom floppy board mounted in this case I 3D printed. The files for this case came from Thingiverse and I'll put the link down below. And I printed it in this uh, crystal clear color here because I had a full roll of this on hand that I've had for an awful long time. And uh, it just seemed like the thing to do. It's a pretty good case design except for I think I would Eventually, I'll print a cover for that card edge connector there. Is that is just screaming out to be touched up against something or have something conductive dropped on it and cause all sorts of nasty problems. The screws I just found in my junk box, and I happen to have four that were about the same, and they worked perfectly. You don't have to put this in a case, but it keeps you from dropping stuff on the board and it looks kind of nice. On the go for retro website, they also have a link to a case that you can buy. Okay, so there we go. There's our case. And then eventually I'll glue that right to the top there. As I mentioned, I got my Zoom Floppy from Retro Innovations at www.goforretro.com. Here is the web page. I will put the link down below. There's more information here as well as a video they have, the specifications, and some more information about it. So I'd recommend looking at this page. In addition to the Zoom Floppy, you'll need, well, a floppy drive of course. I'm using a 1541 in this case and you'll need the standard uh, Commodore IEC serial cable which is not included with the Zoom floppy. Microsoft now requires that all drivers be digitally signed. This is to help protect against viruses and such. For open source projects this is kind of a hindrance because this digital signing process is not free. To help get around this and make it more convenient to install drivers for open source devices, this program called Zadig is used. There is a link to download this below and this is the first step toward our installation process. Once you have Zadig downloaded and before you run it, let's plug in our Zoom floppy. I'm plugging in my Zoom floppy now and I get the Roger beep. So. Windows knows that I've plugged in a USB device, but it's not going to know what it is. When you download Zadig, what you get is a single executable file like this. This is the type of executable that you run, but it doesn't install. When you double click on it, you'll get the pop-up asking you to confirm that you want to run it, and you'll get a little screen like this. Now, if you don't see the zoom floppy in the drop down like this, you've probably already installed it at one point like I have. If that's the case, you can click option, list all devices, and we can go down here in the list and select the zoom floppy. Now what you want to install here is the Win USB, just like this. But you want to select the Lib 
USB Win32. Uh, this part wasn't completely evident to me the first time I tried to reinstall this. So now I'll click Replace Driver. It'll do its thing. And it says the driver was installed successfully. And we can confirm that by going to the Device Manager. So we can go to the Device Manager and look here under Live USB Devices and we see we have our Zoom floppy there. This is the website where you want to download the OpenCBM program and the GUI for it. I'll put the link in down below. Now this big download latest version right here, that's the manual, which is already included in this folder down here, so there's no point in downloading that separately. When you click on the OpenCBM folder here, you'll see the last several versions and if you click on the latest one here you'll see there are several choices this is the manual this is zipped in a tar bz2 format and probably for most windows users you'll just want to download this zip file which is what i did and if we go back to the gui part of it this is the GUI. We'll click on that. And this just gives us two choices, so we'll click on the latest one. And this is the source code. We don't want the source code. You just want this the zip file right here. Now that we have the Zoom floppy driver installed, we can go ahead and install the OpenCBM software. The link for this is below. When you download the OpenCBM, you'll get a zip file like this, which I extracted here. And this is what you see. If you read the directions for this uh, in the Zoom Floppy manual, it's a bit outdated. You can also read this OpenCBM PDF. Uh, it'll talk about opening up a um, command window with administrator privileges and finding your way to this folder and then typing in some commands on the command line. An easier way to do that is to hover over the install.cmd file here, right click on it, say run as administrator, say yes when you really want to run that, and this pops up our command window for us like this, and we'll let it do its thing. And we'll press any key. Okay, after that's done, we need to install the GUI. Now, unfortunately, this comes as a separate download, which is this GUI for, for CBM for Win da da da. We extract that, and what we want is this GUI for CBM for Win dot exe. So, we'll right click on that and say copy, and then we're going to go to the installation folder, which is under C Program Files, OpenCBM, or wherever you installed it to. I'm just going to go over here and paste that in there. Say yes, I really want to do that. And I'll copy that into that folder, and I'm going to go one step more and right click on it. And say, create shortcut, here it is. And it'll say it can't do it there. Do you want to put it on the desktop? And we'll say yes to that. Now, it created this shortcut here for us. And I'm going to rename that. Zoom floppy GUI. With the serial cable plugged into the Zoom floppy and our 1541 disk drive, I've turned on the 1541 disk drive and started the Zoom floppy GUI. And it'll pop up the first time and ask you to check your first round options. I'm going to say detect drive. 
and it says hey on channel 8 there's a 1540 or 1541 which is correct so we know it's working okay and now we can click save and apply changes and tell us our preferences are saved Oop, let me bring that into position there we go so one other option you might want to set is the default location for your files. I've set this to where all my Commodore 64 files are. Now I can ask it to do the directory on the disk that's currently in the drive and I see all the contents here. If I want to back this up as a D64 file I can come over here and say make a directory Call it neuter. We'll go to neuter. And then if we click this button without selecting any files on the right hand side, what it will do is back up the whole disk. Yes, we want to back up the whole disk as a D64, and we'll call this test disk. Oops, that has to be in focus. Test disk dot D64. And now it'll copy the whole disk. Once this is copied, we can load it up in Vice. Another thing we can do is with the Zoom Floppy connected, we can uh, connect to the actual physical 1541 drive through Vice which is very nice if you have a game that's cantankerous about connecting to real hardware or you want to test a program you're writing with real hardware. So of course with the stock 1541 firmware it's just as slow as it would have been back in the day but it's backing up to the computer now instead of to another floppy disk. Okay, this is just telling us that we've used up the entire size of the disk in our file, which is fine. That's the basics of installing the Zoom Floppy and the software that goes along with it. There's a lot more you can do with it than what I've covered here. So read the documentation and ask me if you've got any questions and I will try my best to answer them. One last thing to do here is to glow on our fancy badge. We painted it at the start. I'm just going to use a couple dabs. V6000 or E5000, yeah, I forget what it's called. I'm going to place this at an angle like that just because I can. Now you might have noticed this spiffy and patriotic red, white, and blue color scheme here, which is purely an accident. This crystal clear slash white plastic was just something I happened to have and I needed to use up because it was quite old. The blue spray paint was just because I had just a tiny bit of it and I wanted to use it up. And then I thought, well, you know, red, white, and blue would be good colors and I had some red acrylic craft paint that I painted the text with. Then I happened to notice as I was reviewing some of the earlier footage that that's also the same color of the sticker on the Zoom Floppy package which was a happy coincidence. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I sure have enjoyed being able to use the Zoom Floppy. I was able to use it to back up all the old floppies that I got after my dad passed away several years ago. It was really neat to know I could archive those things, you know, for my own kids. Uh, at any rate, I've only scratched the surface on what you can do with the Zoom Floppy. So if you have any questions, uh, anything like that, anything else you'd like to see me cover, just leave a message for me down below. I'd appreciate it. And while you're at it, uh, you know, consider subscribing. I would appreciate that. Click on the bell icon, and uh, that'll let you know when I post a new video. I sure would appreciate it. Bye now.